This is my second PLC trainer. This one uses a Micrologix 1100. And I'm going to do a quick demonstration and then I'll I'll get into what all we got here. So right now I've just got uh, all six outputs turned on. Uh, each one's going to an indicator. I'm going to load a different program here. So that's downloading right now. And now it's just blinking the top two indicators about once every second. And that speed's being controlled by the uh, analog input. I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but basically, uh, I built this trainer to use with the PLC Programming from Scratch class. Uh, it's an online course that I'm taking on Udemy.com. I'm about uh, halfway through it and it's been a great course already but uh, it uses the RS Logic software uh, based around the Micrologix PLCs so I wanted something I could use while I take the class and uh, try out the different programs uh, and this has been working great for that purpose so I've got the 1100 that's got 10 inputs and 6 outputs all digital as well as two analog inputs. I've got all the uh, digital inputs wired to the various switches that you see at the top. There's only eight switches but a couple of them have a normally open and normally closed uh, contact so that's how I get the ten inputs. And then the six outputs are going to two sets of uh, red, amber, and green indicators. And I chose that combination on purpose so at some point I can do a traffic light simulation. The indicators on the bottom left are just some cheap LED indicators. They work great, but uh, they're, you know, they're okay. The terminals on them are a little wonky. They're good for the trainer. And then on top I've got a stack light that I purchased used and uh, it needed to be rewired. The wires were cut short on it. And I cut a couple inches off the pole just to make it fit this better, but it works great. Uh, all the buttons were industrial surplus. Most of them are Allen Bradley. And uh, let's see, oh, the analog input. I've got one of the analog inputs wired to that uh, generator you see on the right-hand side. It's putting out about one volt right now. And I've got a program that uh, flashes the indicators on the top about once every second. Right now, it's one second per volt from the input. And that's a 0 to 10 volt generator and 0 to 10 volt uh, inputs on the PLC. Um, I did a couple other things. So a couple things I did differently from the first trainer I built. Uh, the first trainer, I ran all the I.O. through terminal blocks, similar to how you would in the field. I also had a separate power supply for the I.O. devices, which were all just switches and indicators like this, um, to maintain the isolation that exists inside the PLC. And while I think that was good practice, it's entirely unnecessary for the trainer, and it took up a lot more space. I wanted to keep things more compact this time, so I didn't do that. Uh, the only place I used terminal blocks was where I needed to for power distribution, and all the I.O. is directly wired between the uh, indicators and switches and the PLC. You know, other than that, uh, you know, there's a couple fuses on the DC side, one for the PLC and one for the I.O and a breaker on the AC side of course. And again, a lot of that industrial surplus from eBay, I was able to get good prices on a lot of things. You know, uh, you're not necessarily going to get a better price doing that on eBay than if you're buying brand new from a, you know, a distributor like Automation Direct or something. Unless you're buying small quantities, and that's exactly, you know, where I fall. I need five fuse terminal blocks, not a hundred. So, you know, because I'm buying such small quantities, I've found that I've had better luck 
price-wise buying these things used on eBay. So most of what you see here was uh, from eBay, including the PLC itself. Uh, and that's worth mentioning too. The, re the other reason I built this was I did get a really good price on that 1100. It was a gamble because it was sold as is and untested but uh, the person selling them had sold several others and had good feedback so I rolled the dice and I lucked out. It turned out to be a working unit. Everything on it uh, works great. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. You know, Everything's on a plywood sheet, just scrap that I cut. I did a lot of work with uh, Forstner bits. You can't see it here but on the back um, I had to cut things down to get the plywood thin enough to where I could mount everything and uh, thread it uh, in place. Now, if you have any questions or comments let me know below. Thanks for checking it out and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to doing a lot of learning with this thing.